G'day everyone, today we have a cool new tool on the bench. It's the Hikoki Metal Connector Nailer, the NR3665DA. If you're in North America and you're looking at this thinking, hey, that looks like a Metabo HPT, not a Hikoki, that's because they are in fact the same company, it's the same tools, just in North America this will say Metabo HPT, everywhere else in the world it'll say Hikoki. Metabo HPT tools are also completely different to Metabo tools, which are the darker green, completely different tools. Hikoki, or Hitachi actually at the time, Hitachi, Hikoki, Metabo HPT, they're not making life easy, are they? They were the first ones to release one of these battery only air cylinder style, no gas required, cordless nailers. They're also the first one to do the half inch plunge router and still the only company making a half inch plunge router that is cordless. And now they are making a metal connector nailer and as far as I'm aware, they are the first cordless only, I'm not counting things like pass load with gas in them, just battery only we're talking about. Battery only metal connector nailer. But what is a metal connector nailer? By metal connector nailer, we're talking a nailer designed specifically to do joist hang hurricane ties, nail plates, and strapping, and basically just anything that needs product nails or bracket nails. This is your typical product nail or bracket nail. It has a nice thick head on it and is a, a good solid stubby little nail. But if you've had to put in hundreds of these by hand into joist hangers or the like, then you'll know it can be a bit annoying and a bit time consuming. So. That's where this metal connector nail comes in. But you can't use nails that are loose like this, obviously. You must instead use collated nails like these. These are full head nails. As you can see, they've got a space between them. They're not packed hard up against each other. Don't try putting these style of nails in where they're collated hard up against each other with the D heads. It'll fire two of those through at once, so you don't want that. So you need that gap. Plenty of companies make these for these style of nailers. These ones are Echo, you can get pass load ones. There's Simpson Strong Tie ones here. And you'll also notice I've got two different sizes here. So these ones are 38 millimeters long, but this nailer will take up to 65 millimeter long product nails. And they can be anywhere in diameter between 3.3 and 4.1 millimeters. And they've got that 34 degree angle with these sort of nails with this big gap between them. You can't get that many in there, it'll only take up to about 30, 31 nails in the magazine at a time. So <laughs> you do have to constantly keep firing new nails into the damn thing. It, it goes through them pretty fast. Now the first generation of Hikoki nailers were 18 volt tools, but this is actually a 36 volt tool. So you will need a multi-volt battery, not an 18 volt battery to run this thing. And if you take a look at the tool, it is basically the framing nailer, except it has a different magazine and a different firing tip here. And that firing tip is what makes this tool this tool. If you take a look at this pin here, this is designed to go into the hole that you're firing the nail in, like so. Now it kind of looks like, how is that nail going to fit in there with that pin in there? Because it's taken up basically the whole hole. We'll look at that in a moment. To actuate the tool, you push it down. It's now live pull the trigger. Just like the framing nailer though, it does time out pretty quick. So if you put it down there, you hold it for like say this length of time and then you pull the trigger, nothing happens. So you need to be pretty quick, which is a tad annoying if you're trying to line something up with the brackets sliding around on you. So yeah, anyway, small little gripe. Anyway, let's fire a nail. That's how easy it is. These um, nails, they have so much <laughs> plasticky, papery, sh gluey shit on them. Anywho, let's go chuck up some actual brackets in situ where they're meant to be and see how this thing goes for getting into tight spaces and shit like that. Got some areas routed out here for some hurricane ties, which I need to put on this shed roof, so we will do that now.
So as you just saw, some of those nails a little bit awkward to get in on the angles, but managed to get them all in. Having recessed for those brackets also made this a little bit harder for the tool because it was crashing in places that it wouldn't do if it hadn't been recessed, making it a bit harder to depress the tip. So let's try another one that has probably even worse angles, but doesn't have any recessing. Now what I'm doing with all these Simpson Hurricane ties is putting 65mm nails through these holes and these side ones which will go into the joist, they are 38mm, so 65 into the top plates and then 38 into the joist. If you put 65 through these it would of course shoot straight out the other side. So I'm going along and doing all the 65mm nails first, so I don't have to keep changing backwards and forwards. Once all the 65s are done, go through and do all the 38s. Now that my 65s are all done, we'll move on to the 38s. But I'll just show you a couple of things first. Quite hard to get this nail in under here with the angle, and so the nail ends up on a bit of an angle it's okay on these front ones here, but I'll show you the back ones. Because I've gone a bit deep with the router, some of the nail heads aren't quite flush. So I'm going to have to go along and just give them a bit of a tap with the hammer. Something to be aware of. But the non-recessed ones were pretty good. So I'm having much more fun firing in the 38mm nails and the 65 A lot less timber and stuff getting in the way of the tool. Much easier to fire. If you can fire it up against the left side of the tool, much easier because it, there's not a lot protruding from this side. Unlike this side, we've got this big bulge. If they could get that out of the way, this tool would be a lot nicer to use. I'm now going to put up some of these nail plates. But if you're wondering where you can get one of these, if you're already convinced and you think, I want one of them, then take a look down in the description. They're out in America already. I will put some links down there if you want to grab one. If you're in New Zealand, they're just starting to roll them out now. I've had to borrow this one from a Haikoki rep so that I could get a look at it. And yeah, but they'll be out very soon. So take a look down in the description for links to that too and any other links I can find anywhere else in the world. And yeah, let's get on with it. That's how long it takes to empty one clip. So I ended up firing 33 nails into that connector plate just then and about four of them were a bit proud and I thought maybe they had hit other nails that I had inside those pieces of timber. Uh, but I grabbed a hammer and they tapped in easily so it didn't seat everything perfectly. And there is no depth adjustment to make that any better. You cannot push this down any further where the depth adjustment would be on a framing nail. Ain't there. What other differences are there between this and the framing nailer? Let's take a look. The power button is unfortunately just like the framing nailer in an annoying place and hard to tell whether it's turned on or not because the light's so hard to see if you are in the sun. They've made a modification here where the battery goes on. They've sort of got a bit of suspension here now on the new one so that the battery's not getting blasted by all the impacts from this thing. Of course you're nailing onto metal 
it has, well, it sort of seems as I've been using it, that it has more recoil than the standard framing nailer, just because you're going metal on metal. So it's a solid stop every time, whereas this, you know, it's going into soft timber, then it just sort of naturally goes as deep as it wants to go. Now I know a lot of you are going to be wondering whether you can get away with firing 90mm nails with this connector nailer so that you can just get away with buying this and not having to buy both. Well, let's take a look. If we take a look at the end of the magazine here, you can see there's a piece of plastic at the end here which prevents long nails from going in. So 90mm nails won't fit in. It'll only go up to 65 That piece of plastic though looks like it's only just there and that the rest of the magazine is full depth. So that was removed, a 90mm nail would go through I think, but, here's the big but, these are not spaced out so it's going to try and fire two of these at a time and so it's going to be a pig. You're not going to be able to use this as a standard framing nailer unless you've got nails that are spaced the same as the connector nails. And why is that? Well let's have a look at the business end. This is our locator pin, put that in your hole, depress it and it will fire your nail when you pull the trigger obviously. How does that get out of the way? As you saw earlier it goes fills up the whole hole you know. Well there's quite a bit of movement in it as you can see rocks back and forth and also this here this is a spring-loaded piece. Now don't worry I have removed the battery but see this? This gets out of the way so it's enough to hold the nail coming down it gets out of the way so that the head can come through and so there's enough space of everything getting out of the way so that your nail goes into your hole and the tool then sort of seems to jump up or forward away from the hole in that direction as this gets pushed out of the way by the nail coming through. I'm not going to pull it apart any more than that because like I say this is just a loner tool and Hikoki might get a bit miffed if I do such a thing. If you saw my video on the pneumatic Simpson Strong Tie connector nailer you will know that the nails go in in different places so the 65s go in at the top like that whereas the 38s go in part way down so that the tip is always protruding from that tool because you use the tip to find the holes with that particular tool. This one you stick the nails in the top no matter what size they are. Now I bet some of you are wondering, as am I, what happens if you slip out of your hole and end up firing directly onto the metal. Safety glasses most definitely on. Let's see what happens if we go straight on metal. Wow, not a problem. Just went straight through it. So you can make your own holes if you wish. Four nails, that's not enough for a nail plate. I want another one. So, plenty of power there. You do need to be careful with the strips of nails. If you're using ones that are like this, a bit busted, a little bit bent and stuff, it does catch and jam up quite easily. It's a bit of a pain. Right, now time for some joist hanger action. I'm going to go to a mate's place, see what he thinks of this gun. I will admit that, Pretty is cool, very not, that is very nice. <laughs> and cool that, you know, you just put the pin in and it takes up the whole hole but somehow it still gets a nail in it. Yeah. Oh, oh those sparks are pretty... <laughs> that's why I got these on. I was like, I felt the first one. Yeah, I, I hadn't noticed that when I was using it. Oh, geez, that sprayed me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> So, what do you reckon of that tool? Uh, as a completely unbiased individual, not in the tool industry with no previous known affiliates, I would rate that. Well, there you go. <laughs> so it's a cool piece of kit from Hikoki, as is this new little blower here. The video for that will either, maybe it's already up, maybe it'll go up after this, I don't know. Maybe we'll do them both the same weekend. Who knows? We'll see what happens. If it's already out, the link will be down in the description. In conclusion, this is a super handy tool and very nice addition to the Hikoki lineup. And what do I need to tell you about it? It sparks quite a lot. Uh, if you've got it close to your face, just be aware. It sparks a lot as these bits of metal get pushed out of the way. It'll be interesting to see how they go long term with that, whether you end up with breakages in there or anything catching or anything. 
But yeah, of course there is a lot of sparks, so there's a lot of metal on metal action there somewhere. And if you're using it above your head, there's a lot of this shit comes raining down on you. So make sure you've got your goggles on. I'm sure you already have got your safety wear on because yeah, you're using a nailer. It misfires from time to time. Um, that's a problem I sort of had with the Simpson one as well. With these sort of nails with this big gap in between, sometimes the paper breaks off in awkward places and the paper might be holding out the nails from the striker. So you, you fire it a couple of times, it sort of smashes the paper out of the way and then starts firing the nails again. So that's a tad annoying, not the end of the world. Maybe with future technology they'll work out better ways of getting these to go through without that happening. But overall, myself and the two other people that I showed this to and used it, uh, we all think it's pretty cool. So if you use joist hangers and all those sort of metal connectors on a daily basis, something like this is invaluable. It'll save you a lot of time in the end. Yeah, the nails and stuff are a bit more expensive than having to use just standard nails, but you make that back in time. If they could get the head a bit smaller so it wasn't quite so sort of chunky for getting into tight spaces, that would be nice. But I found as long as you can get on this side, it's pretty good. But ones in very awkward places, I did have to go along and just give a little tap with the hammer to seat them properly. But overall, I would happily own one of these. Very cool tool. And it'll be interesting to see what other nailers Haikugi come out with. Like a duplex nailer. I know they've got one of those now in the States and Canada. So that's pretty cool. So many options with nail guns on cordless systems now. And this is another one to make all of our lives easier. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on another review again soon. Maybe it'll be that one or maybe you've already seen it. Cheers. What do you reckon? One metal connector over the top of another? Will we pull this off? Well, would you look at that? And I just found where my hammer was. <laughs>